Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, folks. Here, here's, here's something. Both Joe Biden and Donald Trump were in Iowa campaigning yesterday. So, happy new election year. <laughs> My resolution is to never learn who John Hickenlooper is. <laughs> Biden and Trump were super catty about each other in each of their speeches when they were talking. It was like high school, which, uh, for these two guys, uh, involved reading to learn off slate tablets between harvests. <laughs> Biden, single, one-room schoolhouse. Biden... Whoa. Biden attacked Trump for acting unpresidential. Donald Trump, the president of the United States, just spent Saturday night attacking private citizens using language like little Donny Deutsch or total loser. Barack Obama wouldn't do that. No president would do that. Most teenagers wouldn't do that. True, because most teenagers don't spend their Saturday nights watching Donny Deutsch. <laughs> also... I might have. I might have. Hey. Also, nice sly throw out there. Like, you just throw your own boss in there, remember? Just, man, just slip Obama into that sentence somehow. Yeah, always. In fact, the only president Biden seems to mention more than Donald Trump was Barack Obama. My granddaughter was graduating from high school. And her best friend is, uh, is Sasha Obama. Afterward, no, they've been to school together for the whole time. So Barack and I and Jill and, and, uh, and the whole family, we got together afterwards to have a little, a little late lunch and dinner for the families that all these girls grew up together with. We get it. You know Barack Obama. <laughs> we understand. We concede that. We concede that. At this point, you should just change your slogan to Biden 2020, Obama 2012. <laughs> when... When he wasn't talking about Barack Obama, Biden made some pretty wild campaign promises. I promise you, uh, if I'm elected president, you're going to see the single most important thing that changes in America is we're going to cure cancer. Okay, that would be great. That would be great. Uh -huh. It's touched his life. It's touched so many lives. Mm -hmm. Please. But if you can cure cancer, um, could you maybe just do that now? Because... <laughs> Emperor of all maladies. You know, people might, might... Let's I mean, not hang like this. To see that. President or no president, people might vote for a candidate who promises to cure cancer, but they would definitely vote for the guy who's already done it. <laughs> now, on the other side of the state, I don't know which side, but uh, in Iowa, at an ethanol plant, Trump reminded farmers of the moment would he, Trump, reverse some of Obama's water regulations. They took your land away. If you had a puddle in the middle of your field, they considered it a lake. The rules and regulations made it impossible. And I signed that, and behind me I had home builders and farmers, mostly, and ranchers. And many of them never cried in their life, including when they were born, and they were crying. <laughs> what does he have against human emotion? that he considered it a weakness for male babies to cry. <laughs> I'm telling you, people who have never shed a tear in their lives, uh. I'm telling you, as soon as I became president, started bawling wherever I go. <laughs> the toughest people you've ever seen. <laughs> They're weeping. These people, these men are weeping. They're muttering, why? How could you let this happen, God? <laughs> That's how much they love me. Later at a fundraiser, Trump posed an interesting question. Despite our amazing success, the Democrat Party has never been angrier. They're so angry. Do you ever see a people so angry? For what? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> what has two thumbs and is destroying democracy? See, it's possible. I don't know if any of you have noticed this, John, uh, but uh, uh. some people don't like Donald Trump. <laughs> I 
Peep. Which may be why a new national Quinnipiac poll, Biden leads Trump by 13 points. Yeah. 13. <laughs> 13. That's not, that's small. That, 13, that is a lead so big, it's ready for its bar mitzvah. And it's not just Biden. In the poll, Sanders beats Trump by nine points. Harris wins by eight points. Warren beats him by seven. Buttigieg and Booker both beat him by five. And, and, somehow. And somehow, Bill de Blasio still loses by 137%. <laughs> but Buttigieg beats him. So let me just remind you, right now, the sitting president of the United States, the commander in chief, the leader of the free world, is trailing the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the heavyweight champ. <laughs> That's like the heavyweight champ being knocked out by your cousin who claims he knows karate. <laughs> Come at me, bro, for I know karate. <laughs> I could kill you with one toe. Would you like to find out which one? <laughs> that was harder to do than I thought, but... <laughs> Trump's not concerned, tweeting, The fake news has never been more dishonest than it is today. Uh, thank goodness we can fight back on social media. Their new weapon of choice is fake polling, sometimes referred to as suppression polls. This president has had it in 2016, but this is worse. Dot, 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 dot. The fake corrupt news media said they had a leak into polling done by my campaign, which, by the way, and despite the phony and never-ending witch hunt, are the best numbers we ever had. <laughs> they reported fake numbers that they made up and don't even exist. We will win again. Wow, that was... <laughs> Let me get this straight. So they suppress numbers, but first they made up the numbers, and the numbers don't even exist. <laughs> Can you imagine Trump giving an alibi? It couldn't have been me, officer. I was asleep the whole time, plus I was at work, the crime didn't occur, and I don't exist. Smoke, Tom! I'm gone. <laughs> so the polls look bad for Trump, but, uh, I don't know. Can I trust them? I've been hurt before. My psyche is still processing the feelings from election night 2016, and my liver's still processing the bourbon. <laughs> Dare I love again? Who am I kidding? I can't stay mad at you, Poles. You had me at Trump's losing. <laughs> now... Trump talked about his polling this afternoon in a press avail with the president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, which is why we at The Late Show are declaring this Andrzej Duda Day. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Trump was asked about all of his bad polling. No, because we have great internal polling. There were fake polls that were released by uh, somebody that is, it's ridiculous. No, we are winning in every single state that we've polled. Yes, they're winning in every single state that they have polled. Uh, Delusiana, uh, <laughs> Chaosachusetts, and uh, Denialvania. <laughs> then he made what was, even for Donald Trump, a bizarre claim. The strongest I've ever been is exactly today. Not sure. Not sure I'd be bragging about that. I'm 72, I shamble, I only eat garbage food, and I promise you this, I'm at my absolute peak. <laughs> then, Trump recalled the good times he recently had in Europe and his speech over there to commemorate D-Day. I just had an incredible time. Uh, that speech was special from the standpoint of uh, the people of Poland. And I know it was considered a very important speech. I could say it, but I don't want to say it. But some people said it was the best speech ever made by a president in Europe. 
It was the best speech ever by a president in Europe. I don't want to say it, but I got to say it. Because if I don't say it, no one will ever have said it. <laughs> and inversion. Invert the polarity with the thing. There you go. That. And you got a and a and a karate. Later in the doodah day, the leaders held a joint press conference, and in honor of the event, Trump did his hair and eyebrows in neon highlighter. <laughs> While talking about America's relationship with Poland, we learned something new about Donald Trump. We're committed to further expanding commerce based on fairness and reciprocity, perhaps my favorite word. Reciprocity, perhaps my favorite word. I can't wait to spell it wrong in a tweet. I'm thinking maybe Recipe City or <laughs> Raisin Branity, one of those. <laughs> one reporter asked Trump about a letter that Trump received from Kim Jong-un, and Trump was not very forthcoming. He just wrote me a very nice letter, uh, unexpected, and uh, someday you'll see what was in that letter. Someday you'll be reading about it, maybe in 100 years from now, maybe in two weeks. <laughs> Who knows? You know! You! <laughs> You actually know! <laughs> Donald Trump would be the worst ever Comcast technician. Yeah, hi, I'll be at your apartment sometime between 2 p.m. and the next century. Who knows? <laughs> when Trump had... Comcast. 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 <laughs> Do they own this network? They don't own this network. When Trump had to choose a reporter to ask the next question, he just couldn't decide. Who do I like? <laughs> Nobody. Wow. <laughs> what a coincidence. Nobody is also who likes you.